party leadership from the top and stop Labor's pussyfooting response to the Hamas terror attacks in comments that were given to The Australian today. Well, Anthony Albanese has condemned the actions of Hamas. Others in Cabinet have not been so forthcoming. Joining us live now is the Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lee. Uh, Susan, thanks for your time this morning, as always. Uh, just First of all, I just want to start with this protest overnight. Uh, a pro-Palestinian rally in Melbourne, heavily patrolled by police, much calmer than the one that we saw in Sydney on Monday night. What are your thoughts uh, on that? My thoughts are that this unimaginable horror, Pete, uh, the reports that we've seen overnight still coming out of Israel to think about massacres at music festivals, how that must amplify and strike a chord with Jewish history makes it truly, truly dreadful. And I have been critical of the Prime Minister and his team's slowness to respond. He didn't step up like other Western leaders and condemn this. It appears that he hasn't met for a national security meeting and it's day four now. He still uh, doesn't seem to be able to stop the program that he's on traveling Australia and talking about The Voice. Claire O'Neill, his Home Affairs Minister, has put out a couple of tweets and I think responded in one interview, uh, but is not stepping up and reassuring the Jewish community of their safety, yeah. of implications with domestic terrorism, which of course always relate to an international act of war. So, and of course we've seen two members of the cabinet from Western Sydney fail to condemn the actions of this preacher and all in all it's insufficient. So yes, I agree with John Howard and yes, we want Anthony Albanese to show more leadership. Okay, yeah, I mean, you're looking at language, um, and we'll come back to the protests at the end, but uh, we're here now, and, and the language from Joe Biden this morning, which basically said Israel has a right to respond. In fact, Israel has a duty to respond. Then you've got John Howard's comments that I referred to already. So when you're talking about Penny Wong, who initially ex uh, urged sides to um, restrain themselves, or words to that effect, and Tony Burke and Chris Bowen, they're the two... Um, federal MPs from Western Sydney who have kind of been forced into a response at this stage, which has been lukewarm at best, you've got to say. There's quite a difference there, isn't there? There's quite a difference. In fact, the whole dynamic is somewhat lukewarm. While the rest of the world showed their support for the State of Israel with a positive and affirming reaction, what we had coming out from Australia was this awful, awful imagery from the steps of our Opera House. Where was the conversation that Anthony Albanese needed to have with Chris Minns and his police minister? Uh, yes, he made some remarks on radio. Why wasn't he demanding a better and stronger response. We can't have a repeat of those protests, okay. that hate speech, that chanting, that flag burning. And, you know, where is our Prime Minister on this? Yeah, just like you, just as you say that, uh, Chris Minns has got some pictures coming to us live now. He's got a press conference coming up shortly and uh, we'll be bringing that to you folks. But so just on this protest Good. last night in Melbourne, it was peaceful. It, I mean, peaceful compared to the one that was in Sydney on mm. Monday night. People are allowed to protest, right? There's, there's, no one's begrudging them for that, but there is a line to be drawn. So first of all, what did you think of people in Melbourne protesting last night and, and then plans afoot for another Sydney protest this weekend? People are allowed to protest, Pete, and that's always something that we, on all sides of politics, have stood by in this country. But there are lines that need to be drawn. There is hate speech, there are actions, and there are safety implications from the level of pure hatred and the unacceptable chanting, slogans. Uh, you know, I don't want to repeat them, no one does. And linked to that is a real need for this government to reassure the Jew Jewish community of their safety. Mm. And that should be done in, in, in daily press conferences. It should be ongoing. It shouldn't be something that we just happen to catch in an answer to an interview. Look, it's not often that when you listen to the news reports of what is happening, uh, that you have to have that sentence at the beginning saying, please be careful listening to this. It reports something truly horrible. You don't hear that regularly. Uh, and that brings home, I think, to all Australians what uh, this barbaric yeah. act, acts of terrorism have wrought in this part of the world. 